A woman is an adult female human. Prior to adulthood, a female human is referred to as a girl. The plural women is sometimes used in certain phrases such as women's rights to denote female humans regardless of age. Typically, women inherit a pair of X chromosomes from their parents, and are capable of pregnancy and giving birth from puberty until menopause. More generally, sex differentiation of the female fetus is governed by the lack of a present, or functioning, SRY gene on either one of the respective sex chromosomes. Female anatomy is distinguished from male anatomy by the female reproductive system, which includes the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, and vulva. The adult female pelvis is wider, the hips broader, and the breasts larger than that of adult males. Women have significantly less facial and other body hair, have a higher body fat composition, and are on average shorter and less muscular than men. Throughout human history, traditional gender roles have often defined and limited women's activities and opportunities, many religious doctrines stipulate certain rules for women. With restrictions loosening during the 20th century in many societies, women have gained access to careers beyond the traditional homemaker, and the ability to pursue higher education. Violence against women, whether within families or in communities, has a long history and is primarily committed by men. Some women are denied reproductive rights. The movements and ideologies of feminism have a shared goal of achieving gender equality. Trans women have a gender identity that does not align with their male sex assignment at birth, while intersex women may have sex characteristics that do not fit typical notions of female biology. Plot in the West African Kingdom of Dahomey in 1823, General Nani Ska, leader of the all-female group of warriors, the Agaja, liberates Dahomeyan women who were abducted by slavers from the Oyo Empire. This provokes King Gezo of Dahomey to prepare for an all-out war with the Oyo. Nani Ska begins to train a new generation of warriors to join the Agaja to protect the kingdom. Among these warriors is Nawi, a strong-willed girl who was offered by her father to the king after refusing to marry men who would beat her. Nawi befriends Izaji, a veteran Agaja. She also reveals to Nani Ska that she is adopted and shows a birthmark on her left shoulder, shocking Nani Ska. White slave traders led by Santo Ferreira and accompanied by the half Dahomeyan Malik arrive in Africa as part of an alliance with the Oyo led by General Obaid. Nawi encounters Malik while the latter is bathing, and the two become friends. Shortly after graduating from training to become a full-fledged Agaja, Nawi sneaks off to speak with Malik and learns that the Oyo are planning to attack. She reports this to Nani Ska, who tells her off for her recklessness. Nani Ska reveals that in her youth, she was captured by Oba, raped, and impregnated. After giving birth to a daughter, Nani Ska embedded a shark tooth in her left shoulder before giving her away. Nani Ska helps Nawi extract the tooth, confirming that she is her biological daughter. Nani Ska leads the Agaja in an attack on the Oyo. The attack is successful, but Oba escapes and Nawi and Izaji are captured. One of the captured Agaja slips away and reports the other's fate to Nani Ska. Gezo prepares to bestow the title of woman king, his partner and equal in ruling Dahomey, upon Nani Ska, but refuses to authorize a rescue mission for the captive Agaja. Meanwhile, Izaji is killed in an escape attempt and Malik buys Nawi to protect her. Nani Ska defies orders and sets out with a group of like-minded warriors to rescue the captives. The chaos allows Nawi to escape and rejoin Nani Ska. Malik frees several other slaves who drown Ferreira, and Nani Ska kills Oba in single combat. The triumphant Agaja returns to Dahomey, where Gezo privately and briefly admonishes Nani Ska for disobeying him, before crowning her the woman king. After the festivities, Nani Ska and Nawi privately acknowledge their familial relationship. Cast Production Development
The Woman King was produced by Maria Bello and Kathy Shulman, written by Dana Stevens with contributions by Gina Prince-Bethwood, and directed by Prince-Bethwood. It is a CO production between TriStar Pictures and Entertainment One. In 2015, Bello went to the West African nation of Benin to learn the history of the Agaja. Convinced she had found a story worth telling, she returned to Los Angeles and recruited Shulman, then head of organization Women in Film, to help her make the film. On September 19, 2015, Bello used a moment when she was presenting actress Viola Davis with an award at the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles to pitch her idea for the movie in front of the crowd, who cheered at the notion of seeing Davis in the lead role. Shulman first tried to set up the film at STX Films, where she was the head of the production, but the studio was only willing to offer an unsatisfactory $5 million. After leaving STX in 2016, Shulman worked with Bello, Davis, and Julius Tenen, Davis' husband and producing partner at Juvie Productions, to take the idea elsewhere. Studios who turned it down cited an unlikely chance for the film to turn a profit, others, according to Davis, wanted to cast light-skinned, well-known actresses, which they refused to do for historical accuracy and the audience's sake. Prince Bethwood also in 2016, was approached to write the screenplay but could not commit due to a scheduling conflict with Silver and Black. In 2017, without a script or director, the producers met with TriStar's then-chief Hannah Mingella and then-senior Vice President Nicole Brown. Within two years, Brown had taken over Mingella's position and made the Woman King one of TriStar's top priorities. In early 2018, the commercial success of the superhero movie Black Panther, which featured a fictionalized version of the Agaja, further motivated the crew to move forward with the project. In March 2018, Davis and Lupita Nyong'o were announced to star. Nyong'o's role was ultimately played by the Som Bidu. Prince Bethwood read the screenplay once it was completed and came on board to direct, and in 2020, the Woman King was greenlit with a $50 million budget. Prince Bethwood referenced epic films like The Last of the Mohicans, Braveheart, and Gladiator as influences. Her background in sports gave her a perspective on the realism of fight scenes. In crafting the story, she sought for the women to be multifaceted in both their fighting ability and their emotional reactions. She worked with production designer Akin McKenzie to learn about the Agaja. Their research included books, out-of-print texts, photographs, and writings by Princeton professor Leonard Wanchikin. The biggest eye-opener, she said, was how much misinformation there is about these women and this culture, given that so much of their history was written from the colonizer's point of view. So it was really about separating the texts that were from that point of view, which were so disparaging and disrespectful, from the truth. For four months before the shoot, the cast performed 90 minutes a day of weightlifting with trainer Gabriella McLean, followed by three and a half hours of fight training with stunt coordinator Danny Hernandez, which included running, martial arts, and working with swords and spears. Davis was inspired by pro boxer Clarissa Shields. Filming In November 2021, the cast and crew flew to South Africa for a five-month shoot. Prince Bethwood prioritized department heads who were women and people of color, including cinematographer Polly Morgan, production designer Akin McKenzie, costume designer Gersha Phillips, hairstylist Louisa Anthony, visual effects supervisor Sarah Bennett, and editor Terrellyn Shropshire. Makeup was handled by a local, South African artist, Babao Wame Chiselway. The thing is for women and people of color, Prince Bethwood said, often the resumes are not long because it's about lack of opportunity, not lack of talent. So when you're in my position, it's important to look past that resume. For a sequence in which a character is remembering a sexual assault, 
Prince Bethwood referenced Christine Blase Ford's testimony at Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination hearing and asked the actress to read the Roxana Gay book Hunger, a memoir about gays' rape. Filming for the first two weeks took place in the coastal province of KwaZulu-Natal for the shooting of jungle scenes. They then moved to the capital city of Cape Town, where the majority of filming would take place. In their third week in South Africa, the COVID-19 Omicron variant hit the production, Davis and Tenen were among the infected. Production shut down for a few weeks and resumed in mid-January 2022. This production halt forced them to re-rehearse a battle sequence with hundreds of performers. Prince Bethwood called it the hardest shoot of her career. Post-production Editing was completed by Terrellyn A. Shropshire, who worked on Prince Bethwood's The Old Guard. The film's musical score was composed by Terence Blanchard, who worked with Prince Bethwood on her first film Love and Basketball and the television shows Shots Fired and Swagger. For the score, Blanchard enlisted the nine-voice Vox Noir Ensemble, who worked with him on his opera Fire Shut Up In My Bones, and also jazz singer Diane Reeves as his soloist. They recorded for five days with the 78-member Royal Scottish National Orchestra in Glasgow, Scotland. Additional recordings occurred in New York with Vox Noir and Colorado with Reeves. Ghanaian-American mezzo-soprano Tija Quarton led the choir. Three numbers by South African composer Lebo M. of Chants and Dances were also performed in the film. The song in the end credits, Keep Rising, was an original piece written by Jesse Wilson, Jeremy Ludito and Angelique Kijo and performed by Kijo for Warner Chapel Music in late 2020, and later sold to Sony. The soundtrack album was released on September 16, 2022, by Milan Records. Release Theatrical The film premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival on September 9, 2022. It was released in theatres on September 16, 2022, by Sony Pictures Releasing. Home Media the film is set to be released for VOD on November 22, 2022, followed by a Blu-ray, DVD and 4K UHD release on December 13, 2022. Reception Box Office As of November 6, 2022, The Woman King has grossed $65.9 million in the United States and Canada and $25.1 million in other territories, for a worldwide total of $91 million. In the United States and Canada, The Woman King was projected to gross around $12 million in its opening weekend, with some studios estimating it could reach as much as $16 million. The film made $6.8 million on its first day, including $1.7 million from Thursday night previews. It went on to overperform and debut at $19.05 million from 3,765 theaters, topping the box office. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film a rare average grade of A plus on an A and to F scale, while those at Post Track gave the film a 95% overall positive score. Of the opening weekend audience, 60% were female. 58% were over the age of 35, and 59% were African American. In its second weekend, the film made $11.1 .1 million, finishing behind newcomer Don't Worry Darling. In its third weekend, the film made $6.8 million, finishing third. Critical Response The Woman King received positive reviews from critics for the cast's performance, including Viola Davis's starring role in the Assom Bidu's breakout performance, and its action choreography, while some disappointment was expressed in the script. On the review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, 94% of 231 critics' reviews are positive, with an average rating of 7.8-10. Metacritic, which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 77 out of 100, based on 52 critics, 
indicating generally favorable reviews. Lovia Gyarki of The Hollywood Reporter wrote, A crowd pleasing epic think Braveheart with black women. Robert Daniels at RogeRebert.com said, When the woman king works, it's majestic. The magnitude and the awe this movie inspires are what epics like Gladiator and Braveheart are all about. Kate Erbland of IndieWire said, A hell of a time at the movies, a seemingly niche topic with great appeal, the sort of battle-heavy feature that will likely engender plenty of hoots and hollers slash films Chris Evangelista said it was an absolute blast. It's a film that isn't afraid to get you cheering. BBC critic Karen James wrote, It is a splashy popcorn movie with a social conscience. Jamie Broadnax of Black Girl Nerds called Viola Davis's performance a career best. Gyarki said, The Oscar-winning actress, known for digging into her character's psyches, accesses an impressive level of emotional depth and nuance as Nani Ska. The Raps Martin Psy wrote, Davis truly gets to flex the full range of her acting chops. A performance of this caliber is rare in what's essentially an action flick. Chris Bumbre of Joe Biello wrote, Her raw intensity is backed up by a newly jacked physique that makes her an imposing action heroine, and she performs exceptionally well in the numerous action scenes. Other cast members that were praised included Lashana Lynch and the Usom Bidu, who was called a breakout star by several critics, Tim Grierson at Screen International said she nearly steals the show with an exceptional supporting performance. James said representation of history and culture leans toward fantasy in its heroic moments, but is rooted in truth about war, brutality, and freedom. Gyarki said it begins as portraiture and then surrenders to melodrama when faced with the challenges of translating history for the screen and constructing a coherent geopolitical thread. Ruben Baron of Looper.com wrote, The Woman King is an eight-tenths for entertainment value, and four-tenths for how it deals with history. On the aspect of spectacle, critics said they wanted more action movies like The Woman King. Erblin said, if this is what a Hollywoodized and sized blockbuster looks like in 2022, bring it on. Bring them all on. Evangelista concluded in his review, maybe one day we'll get to a point where such a movie doesn't feel groundbreaking, but here we are. Historical Accuracy The Woman King is set in the Kingdom of Dahomey in the year 1823. The kingdom existed from around 1600 through 1904, and the Agaja existed for most of that time. Characters Viola Davis plays the Agaja general Nani Ska, who is fictional. History vs. Hollywood speculated her name was inspired by an Agaja teenage recruit of the same name who was written about by a French naval officer in 1889. John Boyega plays King Gezo a real-life figure who ruled Dahomey from 1818 to 1858 and engaged in the Atlantic slave trade through the end of his reign. Hero Finds Tiffin plays the white Portuguese-speaking slave trader Santo Ferreira who is fictional and portrayed as an enemy to Gezo. History vs. Hollywood said the character was possibly loosely inspired by Francisco Felix de Souza a Brazilian slave trader who in actuality helped Gezo gain power.